So the first step is we pretend it's zero and we find that characteristic or auxiliary equation. So it'd be five m squared plus, I almost messed up. <sighs> what goes here? M. M. I almost put a one there. M. <laughs> yeah. Mental mistakes are okay, I guess, as long as they don't come out. And then you can pull out the pull out the m. So m. So five m plus one equals zero. Equals zero. So we get two answers. Uh, we'll, we'll set the product equal to zero. I'll show the work. M equals zero. Then you do five m plus one equals zero. So that's the answer there. That one, that one's easy. M equals zero. I'll just. I don't know, I won't do anything. And then this one, you can subtract one and divide by uh, five. So you would get negative one-fifth, right? One negative one-fifth. So we have two distinct real roots again. So now we can write down the um, complementary solution or complementary function or the homogeneous function. It's YC. So it's really important if you're doing this one to write YC because the steps aren't given. So, so you don't confuse yourself. So YC, so like if you don't put YC, I might, I might take a point off because it's wrong. So it's c1 e to the 0 x plus c2 e to the negative 1 half x. Because that's not the final answer. Right? That's just. One fifth. You wrote one fifth to one half, so you're safe. Oh, what did I say? One half. Oh, I did? Oh. <laughs> Close. <laughs> <laughs> Missed opportunities. <laughs> That's great. C2. Yeah. All right. No, I'm not going to say anything. I don't want nothing. No comment. <laughs> so, so I'm going to put this in a box. It, it helps on the test, if you're doing this problem, to put stuff in boxes. Yeah. See it? Got it. Huh? So box every, don't box everything, but you know, put stuff in boxes. You know, put a box on the zero, like some, some mental issues. No, like, so, so that, that's why sub C, that's why sub C. <laughs> I had a student once, every time they turned their test, it was like all wrinkled and crumbled. Yeah, it was like, it's like they put it in their pocket and took it out. And I was like, there's some anger issues. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> yeah, I was like, well, so, so uh, they, they got an A, so. So we're here. I don't remember who they were, but they were, it was always a good grade. All right, so that's, that's the first one. So now let's find, let's find the form of YP. So I'm, I'm just going to put form of YP so we know what's going on. So our initial is based solely off of this, right, the negative 10x. So it'd be YP equals, so it's negative 10x, so we have to have what, do you all know? What would it be? AX. AX. Plus B, yeah, good, good, Michael, plus B. You have to have both, right? You have the full linear, remember? Because, because of this. So we look at this one and it's a full linear. Okay, it's a full linear. So AX, AX plus B. <gasps> wow, this is tricky. So look, there's repetition here. Isn't that sneaky? There's repetition between this term and the full, and then the B. So we have to multiply the whole thing by x. That's really sneaky. Wow. That's just wrong how hard that is. So this is ax squared plus bx. I can't believe that happened. Like, I did not expect that. I should have looked at my notes. Wow, I'm going to look now. Like, that's, that's pretty ridiculous, huh? Can you explain that real quick? Yeah. So basically, so you're okay with the ax plus b, right? Yes. Yeah. So the, the constant term repeats with the b. So you have to multiply the whole thing by x. Yeah, Ryan? How come you don't have to add, like, you don't have to. It wasn't there initially. Yeah. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. This is what, 4-4? Four, four? I'm going to look really quick just to triple check this. This is 14. I wonder how messy it's going to get. Now I'm, now I'm like... Oh, it's 13? Oh, it's actually really easy, apparently. So, like, it looks really easy in my notes. Yeah? Uh, so the only method by which we modify uh, yp is just multiplying it by x? Yeah. Like, there's no other... No. Mm -mm. In the extra credit section, uh, which is 4.7, by the way, if you do that, I think, did I say 5 points or 10 points for that? Okay, 10. Sorry. 10. So 10 points, if you do it, you have to multiply by ln x or something like that. Yeah? If we find another repetition, we have to keep 
multiplying. Mm -hmm. and they keep multiplying. Yep. Yeah, next time we can review the repetition stuff if you want, you know, like most people usually want to. Okay, so that's it. Oh, there's no, oh, that's it. That's the, this is the modified one. So this, I'm going to put this in a box. This is the form of YP. This is the mod. This is the initial, this is the mod. So now we have to do something else, right? <laughs> Give up, no. Um, we take the derivative of this thing, right? And we plug it into the DE. So let's do it. So let's just start taking derivatives. See how easy this derivative is? It's like, it's beautiful. So YP prime. Oh, I thought that was really tricky, in my opinion, this, this, this thing with the B here. So 2AX plus B. And then the second derivative, good Duncan, so YP double prime. Uh, it's 2, 2A, two right, 2A, two 2A. Two and then we plug them into the DE. Look how short this problem is compared to the other one. I mean, just, <laughs> and this is a hard one. This, this problem is actually really tricky. Um, like, I would, I, would, I would feel a little bit bad like if this was on a test and we didn't do it in class because this is a really tricky step here, I think. So plug into DE. So that means you're putting it on the test? No, nah, probably not. I don't know. I haven't made the test. I just... <clears throat> I was going to do it this morning, but then I just, just did something else. I was just distracted. Um, so plug into the DE. So 5 time y, times y double prime. So I'm, I'll write it as 5 times 2a, which is 10a, but I'll show the step. And then plus um, y prime, which, which is this one, right? 2, 2ax plus b. So 2ax plus b. Okay. That's it, right? And that's equal to negative 10x. Negative 10x. <clears throat> Doing really good on time. If you well, let's just keep going. See how we're doing. Get too excited. Uh, this is 10a. I'm gonna write it like like this: 2ax plus 10a plus b. I just rewrote it in a nicer way, in my opinion. I think it's a nicer way. Ugh. So 5 times 2a is 10a, and then. 2ax, 2ax, and just put the b here, and that's there. So now we're going to equate coefficients just like before. So we're going to look at the x terms. Marker is like weak. I don't know what happened to it. I just got it from the. There we go. It's a little bit better. So so 2a. Hey, all right. So 2a would be equal to what in this case? Negative 10. Yeah, using that. That method of equating coefficients, very good. So that means that a is negative uh, 5. I'm going to put that in a box. That's, that's good. And then now we have to equate the constant term. So this is a bit tricky as well. This is really plus 0. So you take 10a plus b and you set it equal to 0. So the whole thing is equal to 0. So 10a, so I'll write constant terms constants, I'll even spell it, terms, we got time. So 10a plus b equals 0. So 10a plus b equals 0. This comes up uh, on exam 4 on the take home portion. There's a problem where you have like, like five constants and you're equating coefficients, you have to take all five and set them equal to like three or something. It's ridiculous. And like if you don't do that, like you can't, it's just, just really bad. I gotta remember to give you a hint whenever that day comes. Uh, a is negative five, so we get 10 times negative five. It's a negative 50. So negative 50 plus B equals zero. So B, so B is equal to 50. So B is, showing, I'm just showing all the steps. B is equal to 250. 250. So, yeah, we're almost done. We're getting there, getting there. All right, so now we're going to plug these back into YP. So we're going to plug the A and the B into YP, which was over here. Thank God it's in a box, right? To really benefit of putting things in boxes is that, like, it helps you do the problem. It helps me. Like, I knew to look there because there was a box. So YP is going to be negative 5x squared plus 50x, 50x, well, 50x. I'm going to put that in a box as well. It's an accomplishment. 
What would be the next step? Uh, it goes in here. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought I messed up. I was like, no. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, right there. Yeah, it goes in the, one, the, the modified one. What's the next step? What do we do? General equation? Yeah, the general solution. Yeah, yc plus yp. So y equals yc plus yp. All right, I'll show the steps. yc plus yp. So y equals, so y sub c is this one, right? c1 plus c2 e to the negative one fifth x. One that, e to the negative one fifth x. So c1 plus c2 e to the negative one fifth x plus yp, so minus 5x squared plus 50x. So that's the general solution to the DE, but we're not done. Right, we're not done. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Mm -mm. Just as, it's just customary to put YC first, but it doesn't matter. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. All right. So now we're almost done. We just got to find the C's. So one of the reasons for doing this problem is that I wanted to emphasize that you have to go to the very end before you find the C's, right? You have to wait until you get to the end of the problem. You have to do the YC plus YP. Then you use your initial conditions. So we have to take a derivative first. Let's do that. So Y prime. So the derivative of C1 is just zero because it's a constant. Um, this derivative is e to the negative one-fifth X, but there's a chain rule, so it's going to give us... Uh, a negative one-fifth on the outside like this. Because right, the derivative of e to the negative one-fifth x is e to the negative one-fifth x times the derivative of the inside. The derivative of the inside function is negative one-fifth. Minus 10x uh, plus 50. I think I did that right. Yep. And so now we're going to use our, our conditions. So just be really careful. Usually it's not so bad. So y, let's do the first one, y of 0. So y of 0. So plugging in 0 here for the x. You can think of this as y of x. I always do that, and I never explain it. You can really think of this as y of x. It's just y, but you can write it as y of x. It doesn't really matter um, how, how you write it. So it'll be c1. Uh, this is just going to be c2, because e to the 0 is, is 1. So plus, plus C2, right, we're using this one. All of this is zero, how nice. And all of this is going to be equal to what in this case? Zero. Zero, good, still with me. Yeah, because we're using this one, right? We're using the first condition, good. So Y of zero equals zero. So I'm gonna leave that. You can solve for one of them and use substitution. I like adding stuff like we did last time, I'm a big fan of that. So let's, let's go to the next one, y prime of zero equals negative 15. So now we take the x equals zero and we plug it into this one. So let's see, so y prime of zero. So this is e to the zero, so it's one. So negative one fifth, c2, minus zero plus 50. And that's equal to negative 15. Yeah, I was like, what happened to the C1? There is no C1 in this case. I was like, I got confused, right? It went away. I was like, where would it go? Like, why is it not there? That's because there is no C1 here, right? So it went away when we took the derivative. Um, I think we can solve this for C2 now and plug it into this one. That might be the way to go. So maybe like subtract the 50. Let's try that. So minus 50, minus 50. I haven't done this problem in who knows when. I mean, maybe I've never done it. I mean, it's possible that I've never done this problem in class. This is negative 65. And then, oh, wow. Wow, multiply by 5. Is that, is that 325? 325? It's math. 325. How did I do that on my calculator? No, I'm kidding. Uh, 5 times 60 is 300. <laughs> 5 times 5 is 25, so 325. It's not that hard. I know. I was bragging. Uh, <laughs> I used to know a teacher, she retired, and she was really good at uh, uh, multiplying. That's the story, that's it. <laughs> yeah, she, she should teach like middle school or something. Her name was Jerry. She was a girl, female, that was her name. And she was just like, oh, yeah, she just multiply and add numbers really quickly. So there we go, we have C2. This marker's dying. Plug it back in here. We have C1 plus 325 equals zero. 
And then so C1 is negative 325. Doesn't feel very comforting. That's like a really big number. It's like, it must be wrong. <laughs> it feels terrible. So it's, it's almost worse than a fraction. <laughs> but it's DE. It's like you come to expect it, I guess, when you, when, you, when you go through the homework. Last thing we do is plug it all back into here, right? So plug it all back into this. And we have solved the initial value problem. So y equals, so c1 was negative 325. C2 is 325, how weird. They're opposites. Ooh. E to the negative 1 5th x minus 5x squared and then plus 50x. 50x. Yep, that looks okay, I think. So we're looking here, right? Plugging it in here to, to, to get that, to get that. Was that harder or easier than the previous problem, in your opinion? Easier, yeah. Yeah, I, th I thought this was really tricky right here. This thing here, because you have this, you get this, and you say, okay, there's repetition between the C1 and the B. So like, do you put an X here? If you do that, it won't work, I think. I'm pretty sure it won't work. You have to multiply the whole thing by X. And the reason is, that what I tell myself, is that it's one thought process. So whenever it's one thought process, you multiply the whole thought process by X if that makes sense. Like it's one guess, so it's like yeah, I think we needed, we needed, actually, if we would have put it, we needed the, there, is there an x squared term at the end? Um, there is, look, negative 5x squared. Yeah, there is, look, so there is a negative, there's an x squared term at the end. So if we would have done this, we would have never found the x squared term. We would have never been able to get the solution, right? It wouldn't have worked. So if we do, if we use this one as the modified, we'll never get, we'll never get this term. It's weird, right? It's a weird technique. Um, so you need, you need this one. This one also gives you constant terms. You might say, how? You take the derivative of this and you get this. So the constant term does reappear. So there's hope for more terms. Yep. Anyone like this stuff? Anyone? What's a little bit, Trent? Good, Trent. It's your credit. <laughs> so you don't need it. Uh, any questions? Any questions? We have 18 minutes. Um, I don't know. Do you want to try to do another one in 18 minutes? Yes? yes? Yes, yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I have a question. Mm -hmm. right below where it's Do an easy one. Sorry, here? No, above. Mm -hmm. How did you go from uh, 5 times 2a? How did you get the plus 10a on the other side? Here? 5 times 2a is 10a. Oh, you just I, yeah. Yeah, because I, I wanted to line them up, see? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you want, let's do an easier one then. 